Hello everyone, my name is Rishi Shah. I am a graduate student at the University of Buffalo. Today we are going to see how we can use MapleSim for modeling any mechanical system easily and also finding out the underlying equations that is the dynamic matrices like the mass matrix, the force vector and the constraint matrix etc. We will be validating MapleSim by comparing the final results with already obtained expressions using the Lagrangian method. This has been covered in a previous video. To start with, this is an overview of a model which we will be trying to create using MapleSim. To showcase how easy it is, we start from scratch. So for a four bar, we'll need a fixed frame, a revolute joint, and a link. Now a link is a combination of two reference frames followed by a rigid body. So we take two reference frames and give them appropriate offsets which will be minus L by 2 and plus L by 2 in this case so that the entire link is of mass um, I'm sorry so that the entire link is of length L mass M and since we are taking a planar system, we'll just take the moment of inertia about the z-axis as g. On maximum of these two systems, we have our single pendulum. Now, we can make this as a subsystem and connect this to the other side, parameterize it so that we can provide values for m, l and g. These are the default values which will be occurring when a new subsystem is created. So for example, if I now, let's say, copy this and make a double pendulum out of this, then these will be the default values. Again, pasting it, we have a third link. However, the third link has to be inverted in connection so that it is actually coming from the fourth revolute joint. So we have fourth revolute joint and a fixed reference frame to represent the fixed non-moving link in the four bar mechanism. So this is our four bar mechanism. We can give the fixed link some coordinates with reference to the ground. So in this case, we have L0 length and theta0 inclination with respect to the x-axis. Also, since all the angles are related, we give a rotation of theta0 about the z-axis. So this is our four-bar mechanism. Let's give some particular values for the lengths. Let's say three. and 2.5 and the uh, values for L0 and theta0 will be 4 and 0. We can change this whenever we want from the parameter section down here. So the next step is to now see if this model that we have built is proper. So as expected we have a fixed frame and the other three links. Now to improve the visualization, we could do simple things like drag cylindrical geometry, attach it, give it a smaller radius. Similarly for the links, one advantage here is that if we do it for one link, or one subsystem it will be copied on into all the subsystems so for example now giving it something like this and this we can see that it will be reflected in all the links the next step is to now again see how this makes the presentation better. 
So as you can see, we have a better sleek representation and we can always change all these colors as what we want it to be. The next step is to now go ahead and find out the underlying equations. For that, we can go to the document folder and attach the comparison file that has already been created for us. Now, it's very easy to create this file. We have a MapleSim component which relates directly to the live MapleSim model. So for example, if I were to now take this reference frame and change its position, it would be reflected in the MapleSim component in the Maple file also. So now we restart Maple, say with MapleSim so that all the MapleSim commands are accessible. Similarly with the document tools package. Now the next step is to actually build the equations which is done using the build equations command. So if we say question mark build equations, we can actually see the whole help file and a sample use of this particular command. So we have copied that here and we run this. So we have a one degree of freedom system as expected using three generalized coordinates and two algebraic constraints. So we have R1, R2 and R4 thetas which have been considered, which are R1, R2 and R4, which is our theta1, theta2 and theta4 respectively. The next step is to now convert the file that we have got into a usable form. So we use the get property simulation0 file name command where simulation0 is actually the tag of this particular MapleSim component. So for example, now if I were to actually show you, this is what it will be. The next step is to actually find out the mass matrices. So to make it more understandable and readable, we replace all the big terms with similarly theta1, theta2 and theta4, the smaller terms. And we combine with respect to trigonometric identities so that we can have theta1, theta2 and theta4 in combinations where possible. So we have this sort of matrix BF and XC. However, as we can see, it's very difficult to sort of understand and compare with what symbolic expressions we have received. So in order to get the symbolic expressions, we can go to the maple file, I'm sorry, the maple sim file and actually make all of these parameters symbolic. So before that, let's save this parameter set to be a numeric one and then change all of these to symbolic variables. Similarly, providing values for them. And so we have all the values. Now just go back and rebuild the equations. And uh, try to see what turns up. So we have most of these things are now in the symbolic form, except for the cumbersome 0.25 and 0.5 instead of the half and one fourth. This is because we have a gravity term which has not been given in a symbolic form. 